I keep getting asked this question. What do you think the music industry is going to look like in 10 years? <laughs> yeah, I don't even know where I'm going to be in 10 years. I don't even know what hotel room I'm in. I mean, I don't feel qualified to answer that question. I don't really feel like I'm part of this dying old machine that they call the industry. Everyone I know that loves music doesn't even listen to the radio anymore, so how is that even a music industry? I guess it's music like, like MTV is music. But I don't feel any connect to that at all, so if that's what people are asking about, I can't answer that question any more than I can answer the question of how fast food is going to keep profits up in the face of a global food crisis. There has to be another name for what we do. I mean, that old dinosaur of a and agents and slick dealings and development deals, they took the name music industry back when it applied. But now that it no longer does, they're not going to give it back. And since they had it first, we have to come up with a new name for what it even means to make music anymore. We're in the business of selling ourselves piece by piece to strangers and acquaintances. It's like prostitution without the sex. It's the intimacy without the physical content. I open up my insides and I let you see all the things that I could never say face to face to the ones that I should have just told. I write down things that I could never be bold enough or, or rude enough or needy enough or man enough to say. I put them to a melody to soften the blow and pretend that gives them some anonymity. You know, and people take those words, and if they make sense to their situation, then they sing along. And all of a sudden, what came from my heart is now coming from their heart. And we have that in common. I don't have a name for that. The longer I do it, I, I do kind of know what it looks like. It looks like 50 names a night, or sometimes, sometimes four names a night, that I try to remember. Because if you bother to get off of your computer and out of your living room to come see me, then that means something to me. And in a way, it means something to other people that tonight's people don't even know. Because when you buy a CD or buy a t-shirt and it gets me to the next place, then someone else gets to hear that song that we all have in common. And they don't even know they owe it to you, but they do. Just like you owe it to somebody from the city before, and they owe it to somebody from the city before them, and so on. It looks like baristas, waiters, students, and chefs. Throwing themselves into jobs that only used to be done by, by people like promoters and agents. And they're not even making any money off of it. They just do it because they, they still remember what it means to love music. Well, that means something to me. It looks like Nathan's basement, Shawnita's church, and Andrew's living room. It looks like a sushi party, a college campus. It looks like a pizza shop, Candace's house, CJ's cat, and Shayna's chocolate-covered strawberry. It looks like mile after mile. freaking mile. It's entire days of, of driving with no phone service. It's week upon week of leaving at home the very thing that even makes your heart work just so that you can put it on display each night as it ceases piece by piece to even function as it should. Hey everyone, come look at this. Step right up. This thing is dysfunctional, and it's getting worse because she's not here. 
I look out in the audience and I can't see her and you see, do you see it dying? Like some sort of a zombie. Dying a little on the inside, yet at the same time, just relentless. I get sick and I get pinched nerves from sleeping on couches and floors and I get tired of driving 300 miles a day just to get to work. But they'd have to separate my head from my body to keep me from doing it. I don't even know why. There is no logical answer to why. There's no sane reason that anyone would ever do this job once you get past the glamour of the show. I mean, getting on stage is great, but even on the day of the show, you spend way, way more time off stage than you do on. And you drive to the venue alone, and you set up, and you sound check, and you sit through the opening act, or, or you are the opening act, and, and then you get on stage, and for 45 minutes, you get to interact with everyone in the room, if you're lucky, and people are mostly into it. And then you're off again. You're selling t-shirts and CDs to one person at a time, one minute at a time. You're trying to remember names and do math at the same time, and what it amounts to really is meeting about five people a night, and having about one good conversation. Pretty soon everybody filters out, and you pack up all the merch into boxes, methodically Put away your gear and make sure that you don't lose anything because you're not coming back. Pack it up in the car and go wherever you're staying. You do your bookkeeping and you write down your mileage and three hours after it appears that you're done with work for the day, well then you actually are. Ten hours of work, less than one of which was on stage. And see, that's what makes it worse when it's not great. People talk about artists being self-loathing and being really hard on themselves, but when your day-to-day -day energy and your will to keep going is coming from something as unhealthy as the approval of others, then every little thing that you mess up becomes magnified. It's like you did a full day's work on a piece of art. Forget that. It's like you did an entire year of work on a piece of art, and then it comes time for the art show, and you fall into it and spill your wine all over it. And either people were paying attention when you did that and it's embarrassing, or nobody even noticed. Nobody was even watching. That's even worse. But the insane thing is that it's worth it to me. Without even a shred of doubt, every screw up, every mile, every name that I can't remember, and every one that I can, every load in, every load out, Every time when 50 people said they would show up, and 13 did. Every time I couldn't really hear myself even singing because somebody was having a really important conversation and it had to be loud lest the guy on stage drown them out. It's all worth it. Because there are people that did show up. There are people that did listen. And there are people that this does matter to. That's what this looks like to me. It looks like that one conversation of the night it looks like that email about, you know, how my music, or somebody else's music, it doesn't matter, was there when somebody was going through a terrible situation. It looks like that guy that said that I inspired him, and now he makes great music. It looks like this. It looks like this. It's like very little of this. And not nearly enough of this. Looks like 36 of these, 12 of these, 7,902 of these. And hopefully by the time that we've all come together and turned our backs on an industry that's forgotten about this, and forgotten about this, and hopefully it looks like this. And this. Long live whatever this is.